anointing flowing today. Uh, my son Joshua was a powerful broadcast. And I hope that you watch the replay and see the replay and view the replay because it was glorious. I'm in Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. It says that God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And verse 2, it said, The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air and upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fish into your hand are they delivered. And every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. And I've given you the green herb. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. Now, let's go here. God is talking about the blessing. Let's go to verse 7. It says, you... Be ye fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. Oh my gosh, this is so glorious. The Lord is telling him that he has an anointing on him to multiply and to bring forth all these abilities of God into abundance, into increase, into wealth, into more than enough. Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9, verse 20 says this. And Noah began to be a husbandman. And he planted a vineyard. So he plants a vineyard. Verse 21. Let's go to verse 21. Verse 21. And he drank of the wine. And he was drunk. And he was uncovered within his tent. Verse 22. And Ham, the father of Canaan. The father of Canaan. He saw. The nakedness of his father. And he told his two brethren. So he sees the nakedness of his father. And he tells his two brethren. All right, we in verse um, 22. So Ham is the father of Canaan. Let's go to verse 23. And Shem and Jeph. <laughs> it's funny how they say his name. They call him Jephthah. But I'm looking at his name and it looked like Jepheft. <laughs> See, I think these Bible, these people, when we go to heaven, they, they really going to be like, hey, that ain't my name. Be like, hey, Jephthah. Now, my name is Jepheft. A Jepheft. Like, blessed be God. What, what, what if you name one of your children Jehoshaphat? Uh, the, the teacher doing role in class. Um, Bildrum, I'm here. Albert, I'm here. Adam, I'm here. Jehoshaphat, I'm here. <laughs> Jehoshaphat, are you here? I'm here. And Shem and uh, Jephthah took a garment. And laid it upon both their shoulders and went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward. 
and they saw not their father's nakedness. The word of the Lord came to me and told me, it said, son, I want you to preach this message. And he said, I want you to tell the people of God that when someone has been sent by God to your life, you're supposed to see them as perfect. If you don't see them as perfect, it's not that God is using you not to see them as perfect. It is the devil that has corrupted you and he'll corrupt you into your own demise. The Holy Spirit says, son, you preached this message last February. And he said, many people didn't heed you. He said, I only repeat things again because it was disobeyed. The Lord said, preach this same message again. Father said, because it was disdained, it was disrespected, it was disobeyed. I preached this last February and there was many people that sat right here on my line listen to this message and disrespected the word of the Lord. And so the Lord said, son, preach it again for a testimony because this word will judge. It says that Ham saw the nakedness of his father. And let me say this again. The Lord, and I always want you to remember this, God replaced things in your life when it's not done correctly. I want to say this one more time. When things are not done the way that God wants it to do, he keeps on replaying it back in your life. So for those of you all that say, I'm tired of this same thing happening to me, it's happening to you because you're not learning a lesson. You're not listening. God will keep on doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. I'm tired of this sickness. I'm tired, I'm tired, of, I'm tired of losing things. Well, God is replaying that because he wants your attention. You're not giving him your attention. When you give him your attention then you can move the chapter. But until then, your life going to go in circles. There are some of you all, um, I'm trying to help you. You don't want to live your whole life, get to 90 years old, and you never achieve what God had for you. Your life going in circles. And, and saints, saints, it, 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 it's, 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 it's more tragic to God, or, or it's more tragic to you than to God. Because remember, God himself, even though you may hurt him, he still goes on and, and, and he still has a whole eternity of his plan being fulfilled. But for you, you'll go to hell and it'll be over. And so just for always remember this. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter nine. The Bible says that Ham saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren now, I want you to look at Ham and I want you to look at Shem, Shem and Japheth. Ham, he sees the nakedness of his father and he goes and he tells. Shem and Jephthah, they see the nakedness of their father and they take a garment. And they laid it upon their shoulders. And they went backwards. They didn't want to see the nakedness of their father. In one aspect in verse 22, Ham, he takes joy in this. It, 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 it excites him. It makes him happy. So he tells Shem and Jephthah as a means of, hey, I got something. And Shem and Jephthah, instead of them entertaining Ham, the Bible says, that they laid it upon both of their shoulders and went backwards and they covered the nakedness of their father and their faces stayed backwards and they saw not their father's nakedness. Now, what I want you to see about Shem and Jephthah, the hand of God was on them for good because they did not have any entertainment of what Ham was doing. They only was focused on protecting their divine connection. In verse 24, it says, and Noah woke up from his wine. In verse 24, and it says he knew what his younger son had done to him. Now, I want to ask you a question. How 
if you're drunk and you're unconscious, how could you wake up and know what someone did to you? Because though it looked like he was drunk, he was fully aware. The Lord had Noah build that vineyard. He had Noah get drunk. Noah is in the prophetic. Noah can still see. Despite him being drunk, he still knows who Ham is. He knows what Ham does. I want you to see this. The Bible said Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. Now let's go to verse 25. And he said, cursed be Canaan. Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. But look at verse 26. But blessed be the Lord God of Shem. And it says, God shall enlarge Jephthah and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. I want you to see this. Noah wakes up and he curses Ham. Why? Because Ham represents disloyalty and dishonor. Ham represents disrespect to the anointing. Ham represents missing God on the earth. Ham represents blindness, deception. Ham represents error. Noah wakes up and he curses Ham. I want you to see this because it shows in this text that how you deal with your father will decide whether or not you're blessed or cursed. I want to say this one more time. How you deal with your father will decide whether you're blessed or cursed. I want to say this one more time. How you deal with your father will decide whether you're blessed or cursed. Saints, we live in a generation, many people say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. You ask them how they do, I'm blessed. The only people that are blessed are those that know how to deal with their father. Those that respect their father, those that love their father, those that protect their father, those that are loyal to their father are the blessed. Those that don't are the cursed. Your whole life will be based upon this principle, whether or not you're honorable or dishonorable to your father. As you can see in this text, Ham, it was Shem and Jephthah. All of them seem like they're in honor to their father. But until this occurs, now Ham, it reveals dishonor. There's a reason why this happened. I was having a, uh, a deep impartation with my son, Joshua. And while I was talking to him, the word of the Lord came to me and said, Son, re-preach this in February. He said, re-preach it again. He said, re-preach it again. Saints, I want some of you all to realize that in this life, you'll meet multitudes of people, but they are not Jesus to you. Jesus will come to you in the form of someone. And that someone will represent Jesus. And if you obey that someone, you'll enter into heaven. If you disobey that someone, you'll condemn yourself to hell. There was a reason why Jesus said that the word shall judge you because Jesus will be speaking through his prophet. And it's only by that word of that prophet that you're either going to make it into heaven or you're going to condemn yourself to hell. If you miss the prophet's word, you have nothing to do with God. I, I, I'm underneath a strong anointing because I got to say this the way that the father said to me. 
If your prophet is not pleased with you, nor is God. If your prophet is not happy with you, nor is God. If the prophet is not getting what he's asking for from you, God is not getting what he's asking for from you. I have to be very raw because my bl your blood will be on my shoulders if I don't say what God tells me to say. So I'm underneath heavy pressure from God to say this. He told me to say this and I'm doing it. When the prophet talks to you and the prophet teaches you and the prophet trains you, you choose to go opposite to that. You're none of God's. Um, the Holy Spirit will never use you to go contrary to your prophet. Never. So if you ever find yourself going contrary to your prophet, you know that you're being led by demons. You know that evil spirits are using you. And evil spirits, how do you know that evil spirits are using you? Because evil spirits will always lead you into your own destruction. There will be things in the future that hit you that you don't like. That's what demons do. Demons always lead you into things in the future that you cannot see. And those things become a judgment, a consequence. To save you from consequences, I want you to see to never take the direction of Ham. Ham is dishonorable to his father. He's looking for a reason to prove that his father is not perfect. What I want you to see about the spirit of Ham is that Ham disguises himself as if Ham is of Noah. But as soon as Noah gets drunk, Ham jumps to the occasion to point out that Noah is naked and drunk. And he goes and calls Shem and Jephthah because they honor Ham. I mean, they honor Noah. I want you to see this. He calls the very people that look at Noah in a certain way. And his whole goal is to taint how they look at Noah. Now, there's nothing new underneath the sun. If you are living the Bible, you will experience this. And I want to be as raw as possible because the, the word of the Lord came to me on this. If you are living the word of God and the Holy Spirit is leading your life, you will confront this. You will confront the spirit of Ham. You will see Ham. Uh, you'll experience Shem and Jephthah. You'll experience Noah. You'll experience this. As soon as Noah awakes. So Noah is sleeping. So the question that I want to ask you is this in the Holy Ghost. How does Noah see Ham? Trying to embarrass him. How? Because if the Bible declares that he awoke in verse 21, that means that he was sleeping, meaning that his natural eyes were closed. So how is it that Noah knows what Ham did from front to back? How? Because you cannot see if you are sleeping. How many of you all ever saw somebody walking around while you were asleep? No, you can't. Your eyes are shut. So how does Noah see Ham? Because of the prophetic anointing, the seer's anointing. God has his spiritual eyes watching Ham through this. Saints, the Bible says when Noah woke up, he cursed Ham. Do you know that Ham and Canaan is still cursed today because of Noah and his declaration against the land? They still curse today. Look overseas. They still curse today. Saints, I tell you that that blessed word that proceeded out of the mouth of Noah is still operating today. That's how dangerous it is. When God gives you a father and he sends your father to you, 
Your job is to help your father. That's the only reason why you're on the earth. You're on the earth to help your father. Why does God, some of you all don't even know why God gave you a job. God gave you a job to help your father. Bible say, honor your father and mother. And some people look at that and they say, oh, oh, and your biological fathers and mothers not even in your life. Because that law applies to who God sends to father you as well. Who God sends to mother you as well. Noah was pit in Ham's life for Ham to respect, obey, and listen to Noah. But Ham has another spirit inside of him. I'm telling you people of God that don't let another spirit come inside of you. Don't let the spirit of Ham ever come inside of you. Take the path of Shem and Jephthah. Because though Ham runs wild, Ham is cursed. The one that is blessed is Shem and Jephthah. Both of them, they do not give any place to Ham. Because Ham is a bastard. Ham is a demon. Ham is going to hell. Even though Ham is doing this, they pay him no mind. They take the opposite reaction because they know that Noah is God's connection to them. They know that the Lord is moving through Noah. They know that Noah is their Jesus in the flesh. They know that Noah is their savior. Let me, let me say this to you. Isn't it ironic that Ham was in the same generation where God sent the flood. And the only way that he got out of the wrath of God was through Noah. But look at how he's looking to shame Noah. Look at his reaction to Noah. He doesn't tell Noah, thank you. He doesn't say, Noah, wow, thank you for getting me out of the wrath of God. He doesn't say, Noah, is because of you why I was even set free. I was about to be drowned with everyone else, but you built the ark and you petitioned and helped me get into this. And God's wrath was removed from me because of my connection to you. Ham is still a bastard. Saints, I come to warn you as a prophet of God, a message of warning is always appropriate when the father is changing the season because the father doesn't want anyone to fumble. I'm warning you as a prophet of God, do not take the direction of Ham. Take the response of Jephthah and take the response of Shem. Ham, if you choose the way of Ham, you're choosing hell. If you choose the way of Shem and Jephthah, you choose the way of heaven. A lot of people are saying that they love God, they love God, they love God. God will test you to see if you love him. How will he test you? God will come down in the flesh and he'll operate through a prophet that is sent to you. And that prophet will be God in the flesh. There will be Jesus in the flesh. And how you deal with them will be how you deal with God. The word of God declares also in Hebrews, it talks about that your man of God, your authority, your master will give an account to God about you. It says, let them do it with peace and not grievously because that will not be profitable to you. What is it talking about in the text? If prophet Joshua stands before God and God say, what do you think about Joshua? Or what do you think about Juan? Uh, what was your uh, what was your summary of how they dealt with you? And you say, well, Lord, uh, sometimes I, uh, Lawan wasn't listening to me. Uh, uh, I used to tell Juan's son, I used to tell Joshua something. And they weren't following my instruction. If I do that, it's over. People don't understand. The children of Israel, they did not have access 
to go before God and say, God, I'm innocent. God was going to go to Moses and say, what do you think about him? What do you think about her? What do you think about him? That's what happens when God gives you a father. That's what God, happens when God gives you a prophet. That's why the word of God declared that when he sends that authority figure, he said, don't let them have to give an account to me with grief. That means always be in the place of surrender and loyalty and humility and teachability and reachability. Always be in availability. Always be meek. It is a call and a press on you. The Holy Spirit, when there is a body of people that are heaven bound, he will establish this because he lets the body of people that are on the straight and narrow path to know what he requires so that they won't miss. People of God, I come as I stand in the presence of the Lord tonight. And I tell you that Noah had a prophetic anointing to see him. And he came out of his sleep and he cursed Ham. He said, Ham, I curse you. I curse where your land is. And saints today, I stand as a prophet of God and I tell you that the land of Canaan is still cursed. I tell you that the land where Ham was cursed by Noah is still feuding and they're still poor and they're still lacking right here in this generation today. But if you take the path of Shem and Jephthah, the Lord will remember you and he will bless you. And you will see that blessed face of the Lord Jesus. And he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. This is what the Lord will test everyone on. How do I know this? Because God has tested me on this as well. I have been in many places where I could have took the place of Ham, but I took the place of Shem and Jephthah. And I still do today. And this is one of the reasons why God has blessed me. One of the reasons, one of the reasons, not all, but one of the reasons. Because I've chosen Shem and Jephthah. It's a path of blessing. Always remember that in this life, God will send one person to you that will represent him. And when they come to you, you have to protect your relationship with them. Nothing else matters. If I don't tell you this, God will judge me. I'm not willing to go to hell for you. I love you, but I'm not going to hell for you. I'm not willing to go to hell for no one. I'm going to tell you what the word of the Lord is. Saints, I come to tell you that your prayer should be every day. Father, let me believe my prophet and let me help my prophet. Let me discern where my prophet needs me. Every single day of your life. Saints, listen to me. I am not a hypocrite of this. I've told you of some of my stories. I've told you of things. I've told you. But I'm telling you that this is a secret in the spirit that a lot of people are missing that are going to bust hell wide open. Saints, there are people that even once they miss their man of God, they believe that God is going to receive them into heaven. I come and I stand in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I tell you, not so. And I say it to you with fear and trembling because I feel the presence of God on this. The Lord said, not so. There's people that miss their man of God. They miss the will of God with their man of God and they bust hell wide open and they live a strong delusion in their life. And God does not accept them because he sticks to what he said. He does not go to the left or to the right. One thing I want to remind you about that blessed story of Jonah. Jonah 
heard God say, go to Nineveh. Remember time passed. Remember moments passed. Remember he passed. He went his own way and went into that ship. But remember, God never changed his mind. Remember, even when he was in that well's belly, that fish belly. Remember, God never changed his mind. Remember when the Lord was even dealing with Balaam. And Balaam went on that donkey. And remember, there was an angel standing with the sword. God never changed his mind. Remember, Balaam kept on going and going and going. God never changed his mind. God does not change his mind. You may change your mind, but he doesn't change his mind. Saints, my heart cries out for this generation because I know a lot of people are going to bust hell wide open. I've had three visions, over three visions in my life where I've saw people that I've known and I saw them burning in the pit of hell and they're still alive. And I often wondered, are they dead? No, they're not dead. I'm seeing their future. The Lord said, I'm letting you see where they will end up. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit must become more important to you than anything. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit must become more important to you than everything. Anything and everything. And saints, this message is not for every one of you are in the sense that you are guilty of this. This message is, is given to some of you all because it is to quicken you. This message, some of y'all may say, well, prophet, I don't have a problem with this. No, no, no. This message is not given just because it is, it, it is, you're guilty of this. This message is to quicken you, is to remind you. God keeps you fresh in the fear of God. He keeps you fresh. Saints, I'm telling you this. There's coming a time, as I stand as a prophet of God, that there will be church people. There will be people that you see all over Facebook. There'll be people that you see with big churches. They will be left behind here. I'm, I'm telling you this. And they will be a part of the tribulation. There's coming a time where there will be an outcry. Where religious people, people with forms of godliness, people that did not listen to their leader, they will be left behind to fend for themselves. And they will find out, hey, God was trying to help me. The same way the father sent Jesus, he still does it. The only thing is that when Jesus comes, he's not coming to die for your sins because he already did that. But he's coming to now train you and teach you how to be a disciple. Prophet Joshua Holmes has been sent by the father. I didn't come here to die for your sins. I came here to train you and teach you how to be the Lord's woman. How to be the Lord's man. That's my assignment. I'm not here to shed my blood so that you can be redeemed from sin. I've already done that. I'm here to help you be what the after effect is. It's not to redo the new covenant. The new covenant is already in effect. It is to train you. The adequate for the new covenant. Every generation Jesus will appear. Jesus will show up. He'll move through an individual. He'll move through a person. It's not only. For the people that hears that person. To be aroused and entertained. But it's for the people that hear that blessed Jesus crying out to them so that they can become more sensitive and in tune with his will for their life so that they can become his lovers, so that they can become the true worshipers and so that they can love him intentionally, love God intentionally. Don't just love him just because of what he can do for you, but you love him because he first loved you. When he shows up, it's an opportunity for you to take a hold of what you were sent to the earth to do. And when Jesus shows up to a person, now it gives you a meaning for your life. That's why when that person shows up, God will have you build your whole schedule around that person. Build your servanthood around that person. Build your loyalty around that person. Build your attentiveness around that person. Because that person is your Jesus in the flesh. They've been sent by God 
to play him in the earth. And if your eyes open up, that should catapult you into true worship. If your eyes open up and it shuts, woe be unto thee. Woe be unto thee. Saints, I must do a broadcast like this because as much glory and power and wisdom that comes forth from this same mouth, I must preach and prophesy this gospel. You have been made accountable for this. Saints, I come to tell you that these are the days. These are the days where if you are not in the place that God is training you to be, that he will return in an hour you think not, you will be left behind. Saints, I want you to always remember this. That when Jesus shows up to you through a person, always keep your heart pure towards that person. Always cast down imaginations and hide things to go against that person. You must know that there are demons and there is Satan himself that masquerades as an angel of light that plots against your very soul to get you against Jesus in the flesh. When Jesus comes to you and he's talking with you and he's walking with you, we often forget that God came down in the form of flesh and he had a face and he had a nose, he had eyes, he had teeth. He had lips. He had ears. He was sexy like Prophet. Je <laughs> no, just playing. Just, just edit that out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I did, the spirit just tried to fight me. Get off of me. Get off of me. All right, I'm free. Ah, I got off of me. Got off of me. Yeah, got him off of me. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I got set free. God just delivered me. You're not going to grab me. Get off of me. All right, I got him off. And he had arms. He had legs. He had a tongue. He had... He had... A chest, he had a stomach. <laughs> I, I just was trying to check in to see if I, I could say that one. All right. And Jesus was right there, but they thought that this was a man. They thought that this man was blaspheming. They thought that this man was disrespectful. They thought that this man was a clown. They thought that he was a fool. They thought that this man was a demon. While Jesus was talking to them. Jesus was looked at as if he was an evil spirit. They thought that this man was a lunatic. They looked at him. There was many men that were drawn to him. There was many women that loved him. But only Peter. He said, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. Only Peter. There was 12 disciples. Only one said who he was. Jesus. There were some people that saw the miracles. But they said okay it's just a miracle. Okay. They don't know that this is God almighty. Right in their face. Jesus would teach them. And he would do his own periscopes of that day. 
He would say, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. He would, He had his own wisdom doors. He said, if you're taking notes, write that down. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Y'all got that down? All right, can I go on to the next one? All right, if you're taking notes, write this down. Blessed are those when they persecute you for my name's sake, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. And he, and he, he was talking and talking and talking, and he's teaching and teaching and teaching, and he's, he's, he's doing impartation after impartation, and they think that this is just a man. They don't know that this is Christ Jesus. This is the Son of God moving in that body. They don't know that this is God in the flesh. Saints, don't think for one minute that the reason why the Pharisees were attacking him because they looked at him, they said, look at this demonized man, this lunatic. Want these people to follow him and worship him. And here's Jesus. He's right there standing in front of them and they can't see it. Jesus is healing the withered hand hand, and he's doing all type of miracles and they're telling him, no, you can't do that because it's the Sabbath. And, and Jesus said, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. And they looked at him and said, oh, this fool talking here. Here go this guy talking about he the Lord of the Sabbath. These weirdos. And that's the creator that breathed life into them, looking at them. They're in the presence of the God that built their form. And they're calling him a demon. Then Jesus goes to the people. They said, we are children of Abraham. And they're trying to stone him to death. And Jesus says, how could you stone me if you're children of Abraham? He said, Abraham looked at me, looked at my coming, heard about my coming and rejoiced. And they sought to pick up the rocks and to throw it at Jesus until they would murder him into a cold blood. And Jesus said to them, you are not children of Abraham. You're children of the father of lies, the devil. And it was Jesus standing right in front of them. And they sought to kill him. Saints, listen to me. It's so easy to miss Jesus. It's so easy to miss Jesus. It's easy. One of the most easiest things you can do is miss the Lord. Because he'll come to you right there in flesh. And he's right there looking at you. You can't see it. Saints, I've had some crazy encounters in my day. But... There's sometimes I'll go to different places and somebody will pull me over to the side and they'll say, listen, you just carry such a dominion about you. Who are you? And I'll look at them in their face. And while I'm looking at them in their face, it's like I can see their whole life. I can see if they're Catholic. I can see if they're into this new age stuff where, where people are doing this yoga and doing all type of different spiritual techniques to say that they're connected to God. And while I'm staring at them in their eyes, I can see their whole life. And sometimes those very people, while they're talking to me, I can hear Father saying, this is supposed to be one of my angels but they're choosing to be one of the one third. This is supposed to be one. Saints, the word of God declared in 1 John that the whole world is surrounded, is covered by the wicked one. And Satan has been successful in getting the masses to be asses. He has been successful in that. But the Bible says that there's a straight and narrow path that only a few there be that finds it. There's only a few there be that finds it. Only a few. It doesn't say it's a multitude. 
I encourage you that once you find a straight and narrow path, never leave it. That be the worst decision of your life. When the Father sent me to this earth, I made my whole heaven in doing the straight and narrow path. And saints, until that day you see Jesus, until that day where you stand before that judgment seat of Christ, you have time now to finish, to get this done. You say, well, maybe I haven't been a good steward of it. I haven't really been doing it good. Well, now you have a chance. Now you have an opportunity. You can say, well, uh, I, I, I've been missing that. I, I haven't really got that part correct. Well, now you have that chance. Now you have that opportunity. Now you have been given that grace. That grace that leads to salvation. That grace that leads to sitting at Jesus' feet. That grace that leads to being led by the Spirit. You know, if I can be honest with you, you don't know the countless amounts of people that cry out in prayer and say, Lord, I want you. Lord, I want you. Lord, I want you. Lord, I want you. And then the Lord shows up and say, here I am. And when the Lord shows up and say, here I am. They say, crucify him. Crucify him. Say, Lord, I want you, I need you, I, I want you to take over my life. Let, let, I want your will for my life. And the Lord says, here I am. It was a woman. Jesus called her on the phone and said, lady, do you know that I'm coming to your house 3 p.m.? And the lady says, yes, 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 yes. I'm about to go clean up and make everything nice for you. And she starts to clean up. Somebody knocks on the door. It's around 10 a.m. They say, ma'am, ma'am, I've been running and I just need some water. Do you happen to have water? She says, yes, I have water inside of here, but I'm saving it for Jesus. And they said, but ma'am, ma'am, I, I just need some water. I feel like I'm dying. I'm just dehydrated. And she said, yes, well, you'll have to be dehydrated. I have an appointment with Jesus at 3 p.m. So be it. I have to go now. Thank you. She closes the door. That person dies three miles later trying to seek for water. She's still cleaning inside of her home. Now it is noontime. And somebody comes and calls her on the phone and say, uh, you know, we're right outside of your place. We just need you to come here real quickly just to give us a little help with uh, our child. She says, no, I can't help you with the child. I can't help you with the child. I have an appointment with Jesus, okay? I don't have time to help you with a child. Bye. It's 12 noon. She starts cleaning again. She's almost finished cleaning. At 2 p.m. is an hour from Jesus' scheduled visit. A person comes knocks on the door. Says, listen, ma'am. 
I don't mean to bother you, but I've been seeing all these crosses around your house. I would just love to know who this God is that you serve because I've been I've been hooked on so many things. I just need deliverance from these things. Can you just let me know the God I see that there's so much crosses around you? She said, no, I cannot do that. I need to finish cleaning. Don't you know that Jesus is coming to my house at 3 p.m.? Get away from here. Go, shoo. The person scatters out of her doorway, even falling to the floor, scraping their knee because of the aggression that she carries. 3 p.m. comes, shuts her blinds. She cleaned the whole house. She's looking out at the window to see when Jesus shall arrive. All of a sudden, it start get dark outside. She starts getting nervous. It is now 5 p.m. And all of a sudden, she hears the phone call. She runs and grabs it at the first ring because she's in anticipation for Jesus to show up. She answers the phone and she hears Jesus' sweet, loving voice. Jesus says, hi. She said, oh my God, Jesus, I've been waiting for you. I've cleaned the house. I'm ready. My whole house is swept clean. I'm ready for you to come. Where are you, Jesus? Jesus said, oh, I came to you three times and you denied me. You rejected me. You refused me. 